Okay, suppose I am a student and I'm taking a calculus 2 test right now. And the question that I'm facing is, I have to figure out the work that we need to pump out this water from this tank to the top of the tank so the water can be out. In this video, let me show you what I would do if I just want to get this question right on the test, okay? First of all, of course, I have to know what is work. And we know that work is defined to be force times distance. And let me write down the distance first, okay? So it's distance times force. And what is force? Force is just pretty much like the weight, right? And now, how do we calculate weight? We have to care about two main things. The first thing is the density, and the second thing is the volume, right? But for the density, it's kind of tricky because we have two kind of density. The first one is what we call the weight density, and the other one is called the mass density. But it's kind of slightly you know, bizarre. Let me just write down density, okay? So distance times density, and I know if I just put this down, if you guys don't watch my whole video, if you guys don't listen to what I said, you are arguing in the comment section that this is not correct, but you know what? It's okay. Density times volume. This right here will calculate the weight. But we have to be careful with the density part. Especially, you have to pay attention to what kind of units are we in. Right here, let me just indicate this for you guys. In this case, we are using meters. That means we are in the SI units. And whenever we are in the SI units, be sure that we need to multiply the 9.8, okay? Well, of course, that's for the gravity. But in this case, that would be the mass density. But once again, let me just put down the density right here. If we're using, like say, 2 feet, 10 feet, 4 feet, if we are in the US unit, we don't have to multiply by the 9.8 because that would be considered the weight density already, right? But remember, we are pumping out water, so you also have to know the magic number, which is 1,000 in the SI unit for the mass density of the water. Anyway, here we go. Let's figure out the volume first, okay? That's usually the, the hardest part because you have to do a geometry, you have to do some algebra. And in order for us to do the volume, we have to come back here, and I'm going to set up a reference frame, and let me just put on the x-axis down below here so that everything will be positive, and I will put the y-axis right in the middle like this, okay? And the style is we'll make a horizontal cut. And because this was a cone, once we make a horizontal cut, as you can see, we will have a cylinder, right? This right here is a small disc, and it's arguably a cylinder, just like a CD, right? It's pretty thin. And we have to first recall that, how do we find out the volume of a cylinder? And now, we will figure out everything from right to left. The thickness is equal to the differential, okay? Either the dy whatsoever. So we come back here, as you can see, here is the small cut that we make, right? It's just a small disc. And you will see that the thickness right here is just a small change amount in the y-axis, right? So this will be denoted as dy, and that's the thickness. And now let's figure out the volume, so let's put down dy first. Next, I have to figure out the radius. Well, based on this picture, as we can see, the radius of this disk, it will be from here to here, which is going to be the x value, because that's the horizontal distance, okay? So the radius is x, so we will have x squared. And then next, of course, we will multiply by the pi. And now, this right here represents the volume of this disk. We are not done yet, but let's just continue, okay? Next, we are going to figure out the density. How can we figure out the density? Well, it's just some constants that you have to look up. It depends on what kind of things that you have, okay? Right here, we are talking about water. So the mass density of the water is 1,000. And let's not put on any units yet. As long as you are making sure that all the units are good, <laughs> you'll be okay. As long as you don't have, let's say, 10 meters, and then all of a sudden you get like 2 centimeters, and all of a sudden you get like 4 yards whatsoever, that will be a pretty messed up situation, but usually that won't happen, okay? Anyway, so the mass density of the water, that's water, not gasoline, or not uh, milk whatsoever. It's 1,000, right, for water. And once again, whenever we are in the SI unit, we have to remember to multiply by 9.8 because of the gravity, okay? So we multiply by 9.8. So this right here will take care of the density part of whatever we have in the tank. 
Next, we are going to figure out the distance. For the distance, it's a following. We have to figure out the distance from here all the way to the top of the tank so the water can be out. Well, based on this picture that we have, distance right here, right from here to here, is the y value because that's the vertical distance. The horizontal distance was the x, okay? But I care about the distance from here to here so that the water can be out, okay? Well, the whole thing is 10. This much is y already, which implies that from here to here, the distance is just 10 minus y, isn't it? So let me write this down, 10 minus y. And we multiply by 10 minus y right here. This represents the work that we need to pump out this much of the water from here to the top of the tank, OK? And how many of these kind of things do we have? A lot. Here is the first one, all the way up to here. This is the time we have to integrate to add them up, OK? So we integrate over, well, the y value f here is 0. Up here, originally it was 10 for the whole thing, but the first two meters on the top is empty, so from here to here is only 8. Therefore, we have to integrate from 0 to 8, and this will pretty much calculate the work for you. Unfortunately, notice that x is not invited in the y world, so we have to do more math, okay? And here is where the x and y axis comes in, because we can do some um, you know, ge geometry by using algebra, okay? If you look at this picture, on the side here, this is just a straight line, and of course we know how to find an equation of a line. This point here, based on the choice of our reference frame, is 0, 0. And then this point, as we know, from here to here, the x value will be 4. And then the y value is from here to here, which is 10. So that's 4, 10. Of course, we have to get a slope first. So that's m equal y2 minus y1, which is 10 minus 0, over x2 minus x1, which is 4 minus 0, 10 over 4, pretty much, which is 5 over 2. And then next, we can use the general equation, y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. And I know I could have used y is equal to max plus b, but let me tell you, this right here will cover everything, especially if you don't get like a nice cone, maybe just a half of the cone like that, all right? So I'd like to just show you guys this for consistency purpose. Anyway, let me label this one as x1, y1. So now you see, y is just y minus y1, which is 0 equal m is 5 half times x is just x minus x1 which is 0 and now this is just y equal this times that only which is 5 over 2x right but i want to isolate the x so in another word x will be after we multiply both sides by 2 over 5 we get x equal 2 over 5x and now i will just have to plug in this into this x, and I will be done for the setup. And you guys will do the work of, you know, maybe use a calculator, we'll do it by hand. Anyway, work is equal to from 0 to 8, 10 minus y times 9.8 times 1000. And then multiply by, we have the pi is still pi. And then for the x, we are going to open the parentheses and put this in, which is 2 over 5y and then square that, at the end, we of course have this dy. This integral will calculate the work for you, but you also have to do the work on your own to figure out the value for this. Leave a comment down below. Whoever commented correctly first, I will pinch your comment, and congratulations for that. Anyway, that's it.